Hi dear friends and subscribers of the Cricket Happening Show. Welcome again to this Cricket Happening Show with your host Ram. Today in this part of the Cricket Happening Show, uh, what we are going to look at is I'm going to do a brief preview of the upcoming crisis which is coming up. Uh, this is going to happen uh, in the Caribbean. Uh, tomorrow is the lung opener uh, which is going to be between West Indies and Sri Lanka which is going to be played at Kingston in Jamaica. 9.30 local time the match starts. So I'm just going to do a brief, brief preview. This is going to be a, a, a three test um, I mean it's going to be a tri-series uh, which is being going to be contested between uh, champions India, uh, Sri Lanka and the home team the West Indies and I think that should be uh, one of those uh, very very interesting contests because all the teams are absolutely equally matched and uh, we will I, I will just discuss the prospects today uh, and then uh, what we'll do is we will have a peak uh, at the current match which is undergoing. Today we are in the second day in the tour match uh, where, we, where Australia are playing against Somerset. Uh, Michael Clark uh, had his first game but missed his 50. I will come to that later but uh, let me just start off with uh, the Tri-Series. Now as I said the Tri-Series is uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, the first match is between West Indies and Sri Lanka. Uh, they are all going to be day games actually that's what I understand. So West Indies and Sri Lanka will be clashing at Kingston and Jamaica and then we have one day of rest uh, and then on uh, Sunday, no, not on Sunday, today is, uh, I mean uh, on, uh, yeah on Sunday because Friday is going to be the game and on Saturday will be a rest and then Sunday West Indies will uh, take on India. So uh, we have some uh, good game of uh, uh, cricket uh, coming up, good contest coming up. Now as far as, uh, let's start off with the West Indies, it's going to be as I said, it's going to be a tri-series uh, which is being contested between India uh, who are an absolute role uh, after making, I mean uh, doing the Grand Slam in cricket as I said uh, winning the uh, World Cup, 50 overs World Cup, winning the T20 World Cup and now the ICC Champions Trophy uh, and you know everything has been complete. It's almost like a Grand Slam in tennis that you know about but that Grand Slam uh, was completed by India uh, in cricket. One can even give a name to it uh, as a Grand Slam uh, because of, I mean we can say it's a Grand Slam in cricket. Well, uh, just uh, keeping, uh, keeping on that, uh, now let's uh, look at the prospects of the home team, West Indies. Now West Indies, well, uh, they, they have a good knowledge of the home conditions uh, and they know uh, how the pitch shapes up uh, and uh, you know West Indies conditions are almost similar to a subcontinent, not much. I mean, uh, in those days uh, one, one saw a lot of uh, pacey pitches uh, West Indies uh, no longer provides uh, the same PC pitches I reckon but and one does not know whether uh, there will be anything in uh, store uh, this time in the Tri-Series uh, but uh, West Indies as you know they are very very well knit unit and one should understand uh, that uh, e even though the match actually uh, due to rain uh, West Indies actually against South Africa uh, by the Duckworth Lewis they lost the match but let me tell you uh, it is a well blended unit uh, Dwayne Bravo, uh, well, I mean, Dwayne Bravo will be uh, captaining the side. Uh, as you know, Dan Sami captains for the T20 uh, and the test matches, and Dwayne Bravo will get a good opportunity because one is in front of his uh, home crowd. He can show his uh, cap, he does show that he's captaincy material, uh, and uh, it should be a very good contest. As I said, West Indies are a very, very powerful unit. They have both of them. In. You start off from the openers, uh, Chris Gale. Um, in fact, we, jo we just saw that Charles Johnson is really, really improving as an opening opener and is becoming like an able foil uh, to Chris Gale. Uh, and then um, we have the likes of Kieran Pollard, uh, one of those very, very hard-hitting all-rounders uh, who contributes in all the three departments of the game and he could be, uh, I mean, it, it's just a, he's, he's just a terrific asset to the uh, West Indies cricket team. And then we have the Bravo brothers. Um, Dwayne Bravo and Darren Bravo. Dan Bravo basically did well in the warm-up matches but unfortunately could not uh, bring the same form into the picture when the ICC Champions Trophy was on. And then uh, we have uh, the uh, other uh, uh, bowlers, I mean uh, Ram Paul, uh, Kemar Roche, uh, Tino Best uh, who bowls with lots of pace uh, and then we also have a uh, uh, look at the spinner Sunil Nareen uh, in particular would be cleanly watched. So West Indies are absolutely, uh, you know, they are um, 
they are very very well knit unit uh, and uh, they have uh, lots of firepower and Dan Sami himself uh, leads by example with uh, I mean he can hit some big uh, he can uh, he can play some big knocks and then uh, he can also uh, hard hitting knocks at that uh, and then his bowling is a real asset I mean he bowls in the right areas he bowls stump to stump and his feeling is also pretty good so uh, I think uh, the West Indies are absolutely uh, you know uh, they are in a very very uh, formidable position because one is that this they are going to play in front of the home crowd and uh, for a fact uh, the West Indian cricket fans would love to see uh, Darren Bravo uh, actually win this tri-series and uh, what a moment it would be for them if Darren Bravo could actually uh, I mean if West Indies could do that by beating Sri Lanka who are absolutely formidable and then India were just coming up on a big role and they would have been ounces of confidence with the same team being retained by both India and Sri Lanka and especially India after uh, doing this um, uh, doing such I mean having all three major trophies under the belt uh, they, I mean they, they would be uh, getting into this tri series with supreme confidence no doubt about that uh, and um, definitely uh, the West Indies would be working out a plan for the Indian openers I'm sure uh, I'm, I'm sure the West Indies coach Otis Gibson uh, would be probably sitting with his wards and trying to see uh, what is the best way to first stop the opening partnership I, I'm sure both the teams uh, whether it is West Indies or Sri Lanka uh, they would be first eyeing one thing because they know uh, the success story for India has started from the openers because Rohit Sharma and Shikhar Devan are in some good form. Shikhar Devan was the man of the series. Rohit Sharma has got himself into some good form and slowly his talent is flowering now after quite a long time in Indian cricket which is, which is only auguring well for Indian cricket. Uh, but one hopes uh, it stays the same. But uh, as I said, uh, both the teams, uh, both the think tanks of Sri Lanka and West Indies would be really, really scheming as to how to stop and get an early wicket uh, from I mean uh, early wicket of the Indian openers because the Indian openers are nowadays um, uh, I mean in the Champions Trophy as, as you have seen they put up a lot of um, century partnerships and 50 partnerships on a very very uh, with customary regularity so that is what uh, every team wants to stop so West Indies and Sri Lanka will be eyeing that particularly and then they would also uh, uh, see how to deal with the Indian spinners uh, Ashwin, Ravindra Jadeja who was the man of the match in the finals uh, and both of them uh, uh, are uh, very very good uh, uh, bowlers of spin I mean uh, they really really turn the ball and West Indies will also be wary that uh, they can't really prepare uh, lots of turning tracks because India is breathing down their neck uh, even though Sunil Nareen they would like Sunil Nareen to actually take advantage uh, by preparing those turning tracks it's not really going to work out because India and Sri Lanka are both good players of spin so that is something and besides uh, the Indian uh, batting order is absolutely strong Dinesh Karthik, Virat Kohli, um, um, Mahindra Singh Dhoni, Shuresh Raina and as I said India's uh, another success um, uh, which was uh, a great contributive factor which played a great role in India's success in picking up the ICC Champions Trophy was their superlative fielding every, every player who is figuring in the team can field exceedingly well so that's already been proved so that is something that they will be wary about uh, and you know um, another thing uh, about India is that they have to keep up that same fielding effort the consistency has to be shown and I'm sure uh, they are going to do that with lots of end legs uh, in the team uh, and um, as far as the bowling department is concerned uh, Bhuvneshwar Kumar uh, would be uh, uh, quite a handful you know West Indies sometimes in cloudy conditions Bhuvneshwar Kumar can be quite a handful and it would be a good battle between Bhuvneshwar Kumar and Chris Gale who likes to turn the ball uh, and also Bhuvneshwar Kumar if you know uh, he has done very well against Gale even in the IPL when, when, all, when he scored 175 uh, Gale one would remember uh, the highest score in T20 cricket to date uh, you, you one would remember uh, all the other bowlers in that team uh, I thought it was um, if I am not wrong I am just trying to recollect uh, I have a feeling it was Pune Warriors but uh, all, the play, all the bowlers in the team were absolutely tonked but Bhuvneshwar Kumar was the only one who came up some brilliant bowling figures even though he, he, he also kept Chris Gale quiet so that is a, that would be a good battle and Bhuvneshwar Kumar would like to have that uh, I mean uh, like to have that wood over Gale 
and whether Gale can get out of it, that will be pretty interesting to watch. Uh, and all in all, I think um, India is absolutely well served in the pace department too. Mayesh Yadav can bowl with lots of pace and he can also swing the ball. There are lots of bowlers who can actually swing the ball both ways. Like Mayesh Yadav, Bhavaneshwar Kumar and then we have Ishan Sharma for variety who did an exceedingly good job there in the finals. Uh, and then the spinners. So basically it looks like um, India would like to keep the winning habit going and that should be a good contest. And then uh, let's look at Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka for Sri Lanka, well, uh, one thing, uh, one thing factor in their favor would be uh, if Tilakat Nidilshan is going to play, uh, which is, uh, which is not really uh, known at this point of time. Uh, if if Tilakat Nidilshan is going to play, uh, that would be something that Sri Lanka will be happy about. And you know, Tilakat, I mean, uh, the absence of injured Tilakat Nidilshan. Uh, uh, okay, well, uh, as far as I know. Uh, the information that we have is that Tilakut Dilshan is going to miss the Tri-Series. So that is not good news for Sri Lanka because uh, he forms a very, very good opening batting combination. Uh, and uh, it would be interesting to see who is going to open the innings uh, because whether um, it would be very interesting to see uh, whether it is going to be uh, who is the person uh, who is going to open the innings because I'm sure Kushal Pereira is not there in the mix. Uh, but one has to see. I, I really don't have the uh, team uh, composition right now to really discuss on that. But uh, one thing I can say that um, uh, uh, Sri Lanka is also a very, very great unit. Uh, they would be an entertaining unit as well. Uh, they are led by Angelo Matthews, uh, one of those uh, very, very young captains from Sri Lanka at the age of 23. Uh, and he molds the boys well. And then they have two stalwarts in Kumar Sangakra and Mahela Jayavardhane. Uh, into the mix. So uh, they look to be a uh, pretty formidable. Tilgan Dilshan is definitely, definitely going to be missed. They have lots of talented youngsters, talented all rounders. Uh, bowling Lasit Malinga, always the pace spearhead for Sri Lanka. Uh, and then they have the spinners. And they would probably hoping uh, that you know the spinners could uh, do a good job here, especially against the West Indies. But uh, all in all, as I said, um, it's going to be a very, very interesting series. Uh, West Indies have the home advantage. Uh, India are coming on a roll after winning uh, the Champions Trophy, SEC Champions Trophy, and Sri Lanka would also like to put their best foot forward because they have come to the semi finals. So one can't take Sri Lanka lightly just because Tilton and Dilshan is not there. They have lots of reserve strength in their team and they are pulling off uh, some uh, great wins. So uh, we should have a, a great prize series. Uh, one is uh, really, really hoping to see. Uh, some uh, real fireworks in this uh, tri-series which is going to happen in the West Indies which is starting with the lung opener tomorrow as I said between Sri Lanka and West Indies. Uh, West Indies the home team and this is going to be played in Kingston and Jamaica and starts at 9.30 um, West Indies Standard Time in Jamaica, uh, West Indies Standard Time so it's going to be a day match. Well, so from here uh, as my YouTube broadcast is uh, still available uh, I'm just going to talk about this match which was uh, played yesterday, the first day's play. As you know, uh, right now I do see that the, uh, the play at, um, at uh, the county ground in Taunton uh, between Somerset and Australia has been interrupted by rain. Uh, the match situation is Somerset yesterday, as you know, they were all out for 320. The feature being uh, Chris Jones on debut, scoring 130 runs with 21 fours and two sixes, a very impressive knock and that too. Uh, making it against Australia, that should really, really, you know, uh, really set him up. And because, uh, I mean, scoring a debut against the likes of Mitchell Stark, James Paddington, Peter Siddle, Faulkner, all frontline Australian bowlers, uh, that should give him great confidence. I'm sure the English selectors uh, would be really re looking at this guy, Chris Jones, who played a very good innings. And then we had Nick Compton scoring 81 with 13 boundaries and 66 coming from James Hildreth uh, with 10 boundaries, which took this... Um, Somerset scored on 320, but once uh, they collapsed, in fact, um, they were absolutely in the ascendant with the score on 310 for um, 3 at one stage. And finally, from 310 for 3, Somerset totally collapsed to being all out for 320. So in a space of 10 runs, uh, they lost 7 wickets. So that was not a good uh, batting from Somerset. Kisbeater was out for 4. Uh, Peter Trego made, made a duck. There were, a, there were a lot of ducks in the innings. Uh, starting off from uh, Barrow was LBW Bull Stark for a duck, Trigger was LBW Bull Pattinson for a duck, Mashidi was LBW Bull Stark for a duck, Doctor was LBW Bull Stark for a duck, Overton was Bull Pattinson for a duck, and Hussein was not out on six. So 320, and the bowling figures, uh, the wickets were equally shared between 
Mitchell Stark were at 4 for 33, and uh, and James Pattinson who bowled who bowled well 4 for 56 for him, and one one wicket apiece to James Faulkner and Nathan Lyon. And as far as Australia were concerned, Australia right now as the players being interrupted, what I see is that um, Australia are 266 for four uh, in reply uh, to 320 put up by Somerset. Uh, Shane Watson, as we have been, there's a lot of talk going on as Darren Lehman, the new coach, has already mentioned yesterday that uh, he would like uh, Shane Watson to open the innings. And Shane Watson has absolutely, uh, I would say, uh, really, really embedded the words of uh, Darren Lehman here by opening and uh, scoring 90 valuable runs of uh, 94 balls with 24s in that knock. So that would give him uh, some uh, great confidence. Uh, Ed Count was cheaply out for three today. Usman Khwaja contributed 27 with six boundaries. Uh, and Michael Clark, uh, after uh, not playing the ICC Champions Trophy, but coming into active cricket after quite a long time after his injury, uh, scored some good 45 runs with seven boundaries, but missed his uh, half century by five runs. Phil Hughes currently is not out on 44 with seven boundaries. And Brad Haring, the wicketkeeper, is not out on 38 with a very aggressive 38 of 65 deliveries, five fours and two sixes. 266 for four is the current score as Rain has top player at Taunton. Um, I'm not going to go into the bowling figures. With this update between Australia and Somerset, uh, I'm ending my cricket show for today by promising your dear fans, friends and subscribers, uh, tomorrow uh, I should be there, but I wouldn't be able to say, uh, I wouldn't be able to actually bring you a full match report. Probably I could be a cricket update from your host Ram for the Cricket Happening Show. Uh, so you can wait for that. So I'll definitely give you probably one innings I can really cover. So something like that I would like to do uh, because as you know, uh, well, as I said, um, uh, this is uh, cricket is just my passion. It doesn't pay me unless and until it pays me. I wouldn't be able to do a full report as I need to go on duty. Well, dear fans and subscribers, you all know about it, so I need not even repeat it. But uh, well, I thought uh, just to give a mention to probably new uh, new friends and subscribers who are watching me. Uh, thanks for your company, and thanks for your um, uh, thanks for uh, uh, your tremendous support uh, as usual. This is your host Ram, ending the show for today, but promising you that you'll be seeing me once again uh, with the Tri-Series report. And also one more match which is about to start, probably, uh, I think probably in um, uh, one, two, two and a half hours time, uh, which is going to be the match played at the Oval, the second T20 match, which is going to be played uh, between England and New Zealand. Today is going to be the last T20 match which is going to be played, so that is just around the corner. Uh, so I'll be there for the full match report and the in information is that James Treadwell might captain uh, the English team. Well, so keep an eye. So I'll be back with um, talking about that match and also give you some cricket update on the Tri-Series tomorrow which is starting in the Caribbean. That's it from me, your host Ram for today. See you all tomorrow. Until then, it's goodbye.